I wanted a real easy way to grab some of these flexible solar panels and get them out into my yard. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out a couple 100 watt flexible solar panels that were sent over by a company called Empowers and they sent them over for me to review, and I'm excited to do that for you. And in this review, we're not just going to talk about the specs and what they're capable of. We're going to test that out, of course, but we're also going to talk about use cases. Because of their size and weight and everything, they give you a lot more options on what you can do with them, and we're going to be talking about some of those, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use them around here. Now, flexible solar panels obviously have some advantages over your traditional 100-watt panels. First and foremost is going to be the size and weight. These things that we're looking at today are just over six and a half pounds as opposed to about 15 pounds on a standard 100 watt panel. So they're easier to carry around. They're much, much thinner, about a tenth of an inch in thickness. So they're easier to store too. And of course, the fact that they're flexible means that you can have a lot more options when you're mounting them. Now, these things are traditionally popular for thrown on the top of a camper, an RV, Maybe on a boat where you have uneven surfaces, you can hang them off the side of a tent, you can throw them on the top of your car, or you can put them on top of a shed or something, an outbuilding at your house that you don't necessarily want to permanently install some bigger, heavier panels on. So like I said, lots of advantages, lots of flexibility, no pun intended. So yeah, we're going to check these things out. Now, as far as the Empowers go, they have some pretty impressive specs as far as their efficiency. They have monocrystalline solar cells, which can achieve up to 23 to 25% efficiency. We're also going to look at some of the specifications as far as the voltage and current specs, so we know how it is that we have to hook these things up to our different solar systems. And then some other considerations, such as how well they handle the weather. These things are IP67 water resistant. They can handle snow load just fine and you don't have to worry about keeping them outside. They're gonna handle just about anything you can throw at them, including all the things that might drop out of your trees, and you don't wanna break a piece of glass on a regular panel. These things, you don't have to worry about that. So let's talk real quick about some of the specifications of these particular panels, and Empowers make these flexible panels in 100 watt and 200 watt versions. We're gonna be looking at the specs for the 100 watt versions, and these things have an impressively high open circuit voltage of 30.5 volts. Now you have to be careful when you have a voltage that high, make sure that it's gonna be able to plug into whatever you're plugging it into, whether it's a portable power station that has its own solar charge controller built into it, or if it's a home system that you're building up yourself that you're selecting your own solar charge controller, you wanna make sure that you wire these things up correctly to not blow something up. So with an open circuit voltage of 30.5 volts, even if it doesn't ever get that high, it's going to stay around 24 volts at the max probably, but you still don't want to chance it and plug these into a portable power station that maybe says that their input is, you know, 12 to 30 volts. This is going to be just over that. Now I'm going to be testing these with an EcoFlow Delta series, which is going to allow me to get up to 60 volts input. So if I use any more than one of these, I will have to put them in parallel. But the real advantage to that high voltage is if you're building your own system at home and you have the choice of several different MPPT solar charge controllers, you can pick one with a higher input voltage that you'll be able to put these in series and keep the wire size down for your long run connections. Now we talked about all the use cases as far as throwing them on top of a camper or boat or shed, but with their smaller size and their lighter weight, it really expands the use case to where you can use them for all kinds of things. So let's talk about how I'm gonna use them here at home. Now I've got a lot of portable power stations and you've seen me review a bunch of them on this channel. And as I think about how I can use those in some kind of extended power outage, whether it's a snowstorm or a hurricane or something like that, you start to think, okay, how can I keep these things charged up? Even if I have 10 of these things around the house, how can I keep them charged up and allow them to be useful for, you know, running the things that I need? So when I received these panels, I thought, well, that's great. I'll just have another set of panels that I can throw out and plug into one of my portable power stations and just have another way of capturing some sunlight. Now, because of their flexible nature, they are handy as far as just throwing a couple straps up against a fence or up against your guardrail on your deck or something like that, but I wanted a little bit more easy to deploy solution. Now, they made it as easy as possible to get these things mounted somewhere because they have like eight little mounting holes around the outside and it comes with six Velcro straps that you can strap them onto something. But like I said, I wanted something that was not 100% temporary and not 100% permanent. So I came up with an idea to build a small little frame out of some PVC pipe, mount these to it. And because of the weight of the panels and the weight of the PVC pipe is so low, I can just store this in the garage or store it in the basement, grab it with one hand, drag it outside, plop it out in the sun, and run my wires into wherever that power station is. 
So let's take a look at the frame that I came up with. So here it is, just about $20 worth of PVC pipe. I got a couple long sections and I used a ratcheting cutter to cut it. It was super easy, I'll put a link down below. Then I got a couple elbows for the corners. I got some T's for the middle section there. And then I put the panels onto this frame with some little bungee cords that were outdoor UV resistant. And it was super easy just to loop them through those metal grommets and attach this to it. Now let's take a look around the backside here. I used some of the Velcro straps here just to tidy up the cords. The Velcro straps that came with it were really nice. And I used a three-way connector here on this corner so I can put the legs on. And these legs, you can make them different lengths. I could have a couple different lengths to adjust the angle of the actual solar panels. I just made them 45 degrees for right now. And remember I said we were going to wire these up in parallel, so I got both the negatives here coming to a branch connector. And then if we go over to the other side, you'll see I've got both the positives from the two panels coming to a branch connector also. And then that branch connector is hooked up to the extension that's going into the house. Now each of these panels have the specs written right on the back of them. These are the same specs that we looked at earlier in the video. So it's nice that that label's on there. And this whole frame is just super lightweight. Just look how lightweight this thing is. So if you need to, you know, chase the sun around throughout the day, pivot it around or re-angle it or move it around, Maybe you got a branch like I'm showing right here is uh, shading some of the cells. It's easy just to grab the whole thing and just pull it out of the way and get it back into the sun. So I'm real happy with the design. I'm real happy with how it turned out. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this thing. Now as we look inside here, you can see I've got 185 watts coming in. And this is winter time here, just towards the end of the winter, not quite spring yet. And the sun is still fairly low in the day, so 185 watts, I'm super happy with that. All right, so what do you think about that setup? Let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you've done with your flexible panels, where you've mounted them. Are they on a camper? Are they on a shed? Do you keep them somewhat portable like I do? Let me know how what's working for you. Now, I want to thank Empowers again for sending these out for review. I'm going to leave links down in the description below on where you can find them. There is an affiliate link there, so if you want to use that to support the channel, I do appreciate that. And included down there also will be a coupon code that they gave me to share with my audience. So check that out down in the description and see if you can go get yourself some nice panels. I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, I appreciate a thumbs up. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. See if there's anything else there that you want to watch. Bunch of geeky stuff. Lots of reviews on power stations. So go ahead and check that out. And if you want, you can subscribe too. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.